about as small as I've had it in a long time. I ain't got a lot of things to think about. So I'm blessed in that area. And I realize that is a blessing. But I just feel like sometimes, man, I just want to scream. I do. I want to scream. Well, tonight what we're going to do, I'll let me know when we're ready. Ready now? All right. So tonight, what I like to do is do something once again because I still feel so impressed. And I think that uh, it's not that I'm wanting to attack anything or any person or anything like that, no. One of the most frightening things to me is the fact that we can read the Bible, see what the Bible says, and then turn around and explain it away, you know, because either it's going to mean what it said. And, and, and one thing we can't do, we can never take scriptures out of settings because what it meant, it will always mean. So you're not going to be able to put a, a rubber band and stretch the scriptures out of the setting. So, and maybe, maybe I need to just say this here. Maybe I am slightly disturbed in a lot of areas in my life because of not so much, see, I realize one thing. God is not mad at the world. And if God would ever get mad, he's going to get mad with those as heels first. If he ever got mad, he's going to take it out on us because we don't want to carry all the goods. You know, he didn't destroy Rome when he came, but he destroyed Jerusalem. And so he wasn't mad at Rome, but he was highly, highly perturbed about Jerusalem. So perturbed that he was going to destroy everything in Jerusalem. Matter of fact, not leaving one stone upon another. And he did that. He was very upset. So I think we need to reel in our emotions and realize that, first of all, God is not mad at the world. And, and not only that, is he not mad at them, he ain't even mad at you. But most of the time is that we come to God always thinking that we are less than or we're not uh, fit and uh, feel like somehow we don't deserve. And it almost makes me feel like sometimes I may be getting cocky. No, I'm not really getting cocky, though. That is not me. But I am, but I am boldly, I will boldly proclaim my faith in him. I, I, don't, I will not apologize for believing in Jesus. You will not make me look stupid because I believe in Jesus, okay? I, you know, I've had people try that. I mean, they tried to make me feel stupid because I believe in Jesus. But I've lived long enough to know this here. There is a God, and I believe his name is Jesus Christ. And, and you cannot change that, okay? Uh, I, I can't change my mind about that. But I do believe, again, our biggest problems are personal. Uh, whether it be seeing your miracles or what, your, whatever you want God to do, what you say you want God to do, it's, it's personal. God is a very personal God. And I think that we fail to realize that God is saving, has saved individuals, okay? Uh, he's not as caught up in a lot of the hoopla that we are because he really can only save you. For us, you're concerned, Calvary was about you and you alone. First, you got to see that in order to be able to apply what Calvary produced for you. I, I got to believe in my heart, not, not just a Sunday school, Kool-Aid cookie kind of deal, but I got to believe in my heart that Jesus really do love me. 
And I know that kind of chaps a lot of people because I've even heard someone mention to me. And as a matter of fact, they mentioned your name. I said, man, he, he, he talks about love too much. You, you, you know what really gets me? That there are certain things when you talk about Jesus. <laughs> that when you talk about Jesus, you, you can't leave out the most important part of him. You know, because the first thing God's going to introduce you to is his love. You, you got to know God loves you. If you don't know that, I don't care what else you do after that. It can't work for you. All right? It's not going to operate for you because God operates in that. Now, but the problem with even that is the, the fact of, that we have tried so hard to always bring some limited definition to everything that God is. And he's an unlimited undefinable, infinite God. There is no word in our English language could ever supply us with a definition of God enough to bring him into such focus that we have everything we need to know about him. Because God is a constant uh, revealing God. This week I begin to realize again, you cannot have any more faith in God than what God has been able to reveal unto you, right? Now, so the Bible tells us, because I think most of our problem has been and will continue to be, our biggest enemy, once again, is I don't, I don't believe it's the devil. I really don't believe that because if God gave you the power over him, how can you tell me he's your biggest enemy? Because he, he'd be a sucker to keep messing with something that's more powerful than he is. But evidently, he has you duped in thinking that he is more powerful than he is. And so what we've done is given a whole lot of credit and a whole lot of things to the devil that really we could have changed if we wanted to. We could have stopped a whole lot of things in our life if we wanted it to, but because we fell to the lie and began to believe the lie, and all of a sudden now we believe that this thing is really that bad is that he got us scared and, 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 and uh, anxiety is kicking in and, and we get up in the morning wondering what the devil is going to do to us today. <laughs> you know, oh man, I don't know what kind of day I'm going to have. But let, let's look for a moment because I want to look in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, and... I know you know this. There's nothing I'm going to tell you that you don't know. I already know that you already were ahead of the game when it comes to this. I feel almost very elementary teaching it, but once again, maybe repetition. We hear it enough because I do know this here. If you hear it loud enough, you'll believe it too. What would happen if we hear the truth enough? Maybe we'll believe that also. But in, in, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. That, uh, uh, there's so much just in that little setting alone. First of all, let your speech be always with grace. That in itself is different because our conversation is not always with grace. And seasoned with salt. And if you remember, part of your Christian uh, makeup is that ye were or ye are the salt of the earth. And if your salt has lost its savior, wherewith it's no good for anything. So when he says, let your conversation be with grace, seasoned with salt. In other words, it's that in our conversing with people, there needs to be a flavor put with our grace. I believe there's a certain flavor in our conversations. I, I don't, I can't, like I said, I can't speak for everybody. I have no idea what goes on in everybody's life. Only thing I know is what happens in mine daily. And so with that, I'm trying to learn how to walk in the kingdom of God. 
I'm picking up little bits here, a little bit there. Let my conversation be seasoned with grace. That means that I got flavor. You know, have you ever had people, have you ever had people, some people you just don't want to talk to? <laughs> have you ever met people just, their conversation just turns you off? You just hate to see them come because that conversation is flavored wrong. It even makes your spirit wrong, right? So I believe it's important for us to understand that our conversation needs to be a grace conversation. You know, we spend a lot of time uh, talking and don't realize the, the amount of damage done not so much about who the people you're talking about, but to yourself, okay? But in order for me to be able to talk right, I got to be able to think right. And part of our problem is not just what we talk. <laughs> our biggest problem is our thought patterns. It's what we think. And if we can't control our thoughts, you're never going to be able to control your tongue. You're never going to be able to control your conversation. So, right and wrong thinking is based upon knowing the right words to say. See, I had to retrain myself. I've been retraining myself for a minute. I ain't always been where I am today, but I had to retrain myself because, you know, I, I, I see it in the Word of God because most people take the Word of God slightly, very lightly, I mean. They, they don't believe that it's as powerful as they say it is until they want to use it in some emotional exercise. But the Word of God is very powerful. What comes out of you is very powerful. So it is one of the most simplest principles in the Bible, but yet it's one of the most difficult one to conquer. You know, we'll brag about the things we did conquer. Oh, man, I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't conquer this. But one thing we never, ever conquered was our, th our thoughts and our tongues. It seems that just when, you know, you, you, you're riding along. See, really, you know what, where your mind is really a lot of time when you're alone. What are you really thinking about while you're alone? What, what's really going through your mind? Uh, what, what, what's coming out your mouth because of what's going into your heart? See, that's why the Bible talks about, you know, when, when, when our minds are bombarded, life can be so discouraging. If you are getting the wrong information into your life, it can become so discouraging. It, it can become uh, uh, fearful. You know, I have, I, you don't know the battles I have to fight in my own mind. And I do have to fight them. Trust me. There are, there are things I have to fight with me. Just normal living. I, I have waken up some days and, and the thoughts of what if you die here today? I've had those thoughts. And I've had thoughts I, one night I was in, in, in the room, I, was, I got sick. Wasn't nobody there but me. And I'm thinking, what would happen if you died in here by yourself? So all kind of crazy stuff comes up. So if you're not careful, you know, you can entertain any kind of thoughts that you want to entertain. But the Bible talks about these thoughts. They're not, they don't just remain thoughts if you dwell. They, they start creating things. You know, you, you, you started thinking on things too long. You know, I, I, I've had people cast themselves down because of the thought pattern they got in their mind. You know, in this world we live in with commercials and ads and everything where everybody is trying to tell you, you know, if you are five feet eight, you need to be 150 pounds. And <laughs> you five feet eight, and you look at these commercials, and everybody's 150 pounds, but you 300. And then all of a sudden, you know what you feel like? I'm a failure. I ain't no good. Wait a minute. Who told you that? Who, who do you really want to believe? I see people feel less than people because of something outside of them they can't control. You know, I'm a human being. And, you know, I, I hate that I couldn't have been born like everybody. No, I don't hate it. 
I'm just glad I'm who I am. Okay, whatever that is. I'm, I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to fit your image. I'm not trying to fit your ad. I'm not trying to fit in there. I am who I am and happy with being that. But the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, cast down imaginations. Cast down imagination. How do you cast them down? How, how do you get from hating yourself to loving yourself? How do you make the, the transition? Have you ever hated yourself? I grew up, I used to hate myself. You know why I hated myself? Because I was poor. Everybody we went, we went on band trips, everybody would go to McDonald's and get sandwiches, and I couldn't. I hated myself because I couldn't eat McDonald's hamburger. Is that a reason to hate yourself? No. But that's human thinking. So I felt like since they could afford McDonald's and I couldn't, that means I must have been a lesser person. It took me years to get out of such an insecure mindset. It took me so many years to realize that it wasn't money that makes me who I am. You are who you are because that's how God created you. And you can't be nobody else. You're a fool to try to be anybody else. But cast down these imagination, every high thing that's all itself against the knowledge of God, bring in captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. People need to get a real God-revealed image of themselves. Who are you in God? Who did God say that you are? When I read in this Bible and see who God says that I am, you know what I'm looking for in this book? I'm trying to get all the revelation I can on that person he says I am. When I read in here and he says that I'm more than a conqueror, guess what I'm looking for? I'm not a loser. Now, what do you want to believe that or not? I ain't never believed in losing. I am a winner because he's a winner. I am victorious because he is victorious. No matter how you cut the cake, my success or my, my uh, getting to the top of the mountain has nothing to do with me and him. I am not striving. Nope. I am living and enjoying the rest that God has given us. So we got these thoughts that come into our mind. They're like we got a database. You know, they come in, and I don't know how many times that we've had thoughts to come in. We can't tell whether the thought came from God <laughs> or it came from the pizza we just ate. We, we can't tell which one created the thought. But we have a tendency, though, if, if it's a thought that we like, we may spend a little bit more time on it. And if it's a thought that we don't like, we can hear them to kind of discard that unless it comes back up again. And then we'll ask ourselves, I wonder why do I keep thinking this? <laughs> Is this a sign from God? Have you had that? So you, you got all these thoughts coming into, you, into your mind, not knowing, well, this thought is from God. Is it from you? Is it just from your senses? Is it coming from the devil? Not sure where it's coming from. It all depends on how it sets with me. It depends on what now I want to even, you know, investigate. And there are some things that come to me I don't even have to investigate. <laughs> there are some thoughts that come to me I just know. That ain't God. <laughs> I, I rode past a, a car place oh, about a few months ago. And I just had this idea, maybe I just go and get me another car, just get, quit playing around. And so I, I got in one of these, they call them one of them Audis uh, A8. I didn't know they made cars like that. I guess I've been on the back burner for too long. So I drove it. It wasn't a new one, but I drove it. And man, was it a car. And See, now, I wanted to believe that God was impressing me to do that. I knew, I wanted it. We, I even talked to him in the car about it. <laughs> I 
because I liked it, I really wanted God to give me a green light. I, I just knew. Well, God, I wouldn't even stop over here one for you. No, every stop I made one because of him. <laughs> That's like Adam and Eve. They stopped at the tree. God didn't impress them to do that. They stopped along the way. That wasn't what God wanted them to do, but they did. But I had to realize that this idea came into my mind subtly because I had a lot of people around me had just got a car, and, you know, believe it or not, little seeds get planted. You don't even know they're being planted. And, you know, your car was running good until everybody got one. Then all of a sudden they got one. Then my steering, my, my power steering started getting all tight. I said, see here, I'm getting so sick of that. And then my air conditioning went out. Oh, man, it's got to go. You know, I'm so glad I didn't do that. I am so glad that my air conditioner is working good right now. <laughs> See, when I bought the car, it was in the cold, and the air worked real good. It didn't, it didn't quit working until summer came. <laughs> So now that I have survived the summer, it's working good again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep it. <laughs> but anyway, all these things, all these ideas come into our head, and we dwell on them. And then next thing you know, if we dwell on something long enough, that becomes our imagination. And once that imagination started messing with you, the next thing you know, you know your next step is, is that you're going to produce something from your imagination now. You're going to get something. And then all of a sudden, if it gets too, if your imagination gets too strong, it will become a stronghold. You'll feel like, if I don't get this, I don't think I'm going to live. Have you ever had something so strong that you felt like, if I don't get this, I ain't going to make it? Because you dwelled on something that became a stronghold in your mind, and if you don't get this here, this stronghold got you so bound up that you got to have it. I don't know how many times I got strongholds in my mind that made me go and do something stupid and found out that, man, no, I didn't need it. But so these thoughts... They come. There are places. They come from the devil. They come from your senses. And, and don't think we're not emotional because we are very much emotional. Matter of fact, we operate in too much emotions. I know people say, well, God gave us emotion. Yeah, he gave us pause and ivory too. <laughs> and just because he gave us emotions, yes, there are places for them. And I think... We cannot live in this world without exercising some emotion. Matter of fact, God touches our emotions sometimes. But we cannot always make our decisions based upon some kind of emotional trip. We can't base our decision just because our senses feels right about it. Just because I feel right about it does not always make it right. It may be, you know, I feel right about eating ribs but if I eat them it won't be right all right so I love ribs I got an emotional thing with ribs I got an emotional thing with pork period but you know what no matter how emotional I get about it mm -mm. It, do, it's, it doesn't get it it doesn't make me feel well it does put me in an emotional state but not a good one so I don't mess with it you know just because I feel good about it doesn't make it good for me. So we got to bring all these things, our emotions and all these senses and the information that's been just really bumble, just poured on you like ketchup now. You, you got all kinds of information. We live in an age of nothing but information. It, you, if you don't have a clear-cut path, to the kingdom of God, you have to get sidetracked by all the distractions that comes 
we're living in this world today. And so we need to understand is that in Romans chapter 8, you're going to need more than a natural mind to understand the things of God. Eight and seven. You're gonna, you're gonna, the natural mind cannot know the things of God. Cannot receive the things of God. So you're going to need a lot more than a high school diploma and a a uh, college degree to know God. Matter of fact, you could know God probably better if you didn't have those. But since we do have the ability and we have built up a lot of strongholds in our mind just from our educational system, believe it or not, a lot of things have created strongholds in us that we didn't think they were strongholds, but they have been. You know, I, I, I felt like as a, person growing up, very independent man. And I always felt like, man, if you're going to make anything in this world, you got to pull yourself up by your own bootstrap. I mean, this has been my thing even today. I'm very humble today. Even today, if I was in need, I don't know what I would do. I really don't. Because I just always felt like Kelly can get the job done. So, Coming to God has been, it's been a real experience because you can get ahead of him all you want to, but he still ain't going ain't gonna to make him run any faster. <laughs> you may run ahead, but he's not going to run faster. He's just still going to be where he is. And when you get through running and wearing yourself out, guess where? He's going to still be in the same place. You know, that's what I found out. I, 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 I tried to run and tell him to catch up, but he won't. I try to tell him, why are you lagging behind? But he says the race is not given to the swiftest. <laughs> it's not. Well, you would almost think it is because everybody's trying to get to the finish line. And you know what's sad? We don't know where the finish line is. And so we're just running. I seen a guy just the other day. Pulled up on me. See, God's got me saved though now. Because I hate that. But he pulled up on me and darted around me because I was going too slow, he thought. Pulled up at the next light. I pulled up beside him. I could see he was really hot. He darted off again. Went up to the next light. Guess what? Turtle, the tortoise, coming on up. Guess who was still at the other light? Him. Why is everybody running so hard? All those songs we say running, I ain't running for my life. Because I don't know where to run to. So here we are running, hair up. I got to hair up and do this. Because if I don't do this, then what? Tell me. If you don't, then what? How many times he went to bed at night and you didn't get it done? Was it still there the next day? Because, see, stuff wastes on you. <laughs> Life, well, you, no matter how fast you try to live it, it still waits on you. You're not going to get ahead of it. It ain't going to be catching up with you. You're going to take one step at a time and live this life one day at a time, no matter how you try to do that. So we got this God is saying, you can't make it in the flesh. And we've got people saying, God, you don't understand. You don't know what I know. You, you think he don't? He the one created this thing, and so he's telling you already, you're not going to be able to get what I'm trying to give you in the flesh. You're not going to be able to operate like that. It won't work. But we are so adamantly against God interfering in our good things that we'll go out our way to try to prove and make God out of a lie. It's not going to happen. Oh, praise God. So your mind, when you don't utilize the Spirit of God, and it is scary, because unless you become accustomed to God's meddling in your life, make you uneasy sometimes. You know, I used to know 
I didn't know enough about God. I knew some things about God. And I would always test things with God is that when I got that uneasy feeling, didn't know why I got it, I just go ahead and count, chalk that up. Run, leave this alone. If, he, if, he, if you're that uneasy about it, because the thing about God is that when he gives you something, he's going to make peace in that for you. You're going to have a lot of peace going into it. If you're not a lot of peace, I'm going to wait till the peace come. I'm not going to, you know, you know, this week I've been, I want to call the insurance company, but I ain't got enough peace in my soul right now to call them. Because if I call them right now, I don't think I can say the right things. I don't think my conversation is going to be with grace seasoned with salt. I don't want them to get the wrong flavor. Because I know sometimes we think it's okay not to be a Christian. But it's never okay. Okay? Because this is who we are. And so I cannot allow myself. You know, I, I, I want to gauge my own self. Now, I know if I would have called him this week, because they playing with my, trying to play in my emotions. But I didn't. I kept thinking about it. I said, but I don't think I got enough grace in the conversation right now. Because what I want to tell them right now, it's not going to be good. So, best thing, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let them call me so that I know that's the day God wants them to talk to me. <laughs> Well, you know, so what happens is that if God speaks to us, he's not going to talk through your old mind. He's going to talk to you through your renewed mind, right? See, we want God to talk to us in our old mind, in our old thinking. But that's why the Bible talks about you must you be conformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because if your mind doesn't get renewed, then, you know, what you're going to try to do is filter all the new things of God through old thought patterns. That's why you can't have, that's why you'll have a hard time believing that God has made you who you are because you're trying to make God work through your old thought pattern to make you feel a really, get relief from what you think is wrong with you. So we have this constant power struggle going on inside of us. Constant. We have the word of God coming to heart. Then we got these, whether you call it the devil or you, flesh, bringing thoughts to our minds, same time. They're clashing, and, and, and then, uh, you know, we know what God said, but there's some more thoughts coming from out here from the outside that's, that's almost laughing at what God has said about you. You know, what God said about you, you see that. You, you kind of see that, but you know what's more real to you? You know what really becomes more real to you is not what God said, have you, know, have you ever noticed how easy it is for you not to believe what God said about you? All it takes is one person. All it takes is one doctor. All it takes is one person to come and tell you something different than what God said about you, and you will all immediately begin to believe everything that they said about you and have a hard time accepting anything God may have said about it. And so the power struggle is on every day. You know, people talking about spiritual warfare, yeah, there is a real spiritual warfare going on in everybody's life. And then that's the spirit of God in you fighting against your flesh every day you live. When you get up, there is a warfare. Either you have got up a winner or you're trying to win. You, that's why you get up every morning. That's why you put your flesh to rest by getting up in the morning Giving God thanks at the beginning of the day. Get your mind right. That's how you get your mind right. You get up in the morning by thanking God in the morning early. Because if you waste time, you're going to have a lot of things in that day that you're not going to be thankful for. There's a lot of things that come your way that you're going to have a hard time giving God thanks in. 
But if I've already started my day off with giving him thanks, I've unlocked the door for blessings to flow to my life that day. And whatever else flows in my life, it doesn't really matter because I've already given thanks. I didn't just give him thanks from the top of my head, but learning how to give thanks from your heart. Lord, I thank you. It, it, you know, I'm, I, maybe I'm so shallow, but I just thank God that I'm just here. It's just real, so I thank God every day that I'm alive in him. So as we cast these things down, it's an effort. You're not going to just, oh, uh, I pray for my mind in Jesus' name, be gone. And, and it's happening. It's not quite like that simple. You know, Lord, I take away these crazy thoughts. How can he take something away you don't put in? Huh? Let's get to the bottom of it. Because see what happened. One thing God knows. When he got ready to put him in the, in the promised land, you know what he said? He said, he gave it to him, but he couldn't give it to him when he gave it to him. All right? God wouldn't go in and clean out all the inhabitants of that land. Because he said it would, if he did that, that land would just run wild with all kind of stuff. And so he'd rather have something in it than nothing in it. Right? Same thing with us today is that a lot of the things that's in our minds, it would have been good. You know what would have really been good when I got saved and you got saved is that the very time we got saved that God would have just done a whole erase, just erased childhood, everything. And we just came in pure, a clean heart, dry, no bad data, but we don't come like that, do we? None of us came to God with a clean hard drive. And the only thing about a hard drive is that even after you erase some things, the tracks are still there. Did you know that? You know, I, I, in my computer, I'm not a computer wizard or anything like that, but I, I you know, like if I typed in, if I've been to uh, uh, Google the uh, trying to find something in Webster Dictionary, and I deleted it, got off my hard drive. If I went back up there to search again and just typed in W-E-B, it automatically come up because the tracks are still there. Have you ever seen that in your life too? Is that certain things just you thought you forgot? <laughs> you see a couple of letters and all of a sudden it just came back up. Because you thought it was erased, deleted, gone. So we we got to look at this now. The reprogramming of God. Because that, that, that's really what happens. It's the hard part of this is the reprogramming of God. Trying to reprogram this hard drive. Putting data in there that will work differently now. Because if you keep putting the same old data from the past, back onto the hard drive. That's the reason why you got to realize when God cleaned you up, see, because see, repentance really, the word repentance really means change of mind. So when God really brought you in, he really wanted you to have a new mind. Let the mind that was in Christ be also in you. And that's not easy for us to comprehend because we have a, a default. When things don't work as they should, we fall back to our default setting. Our default setting is flesh take control. And... <laughs> We reboot, and all of a sudden, here we are again, back in the same place. Guess what we're doing? We're fighting the same old stuff. And you know why we're still fighting the same old stuff? And we can't understand. I don't know why I'm still fighting the same old thing. Well, your hard drive you got some prints on it. <laughs> you, 
You want to think something else, but you can't because the data you got won't allow you to think above the data you got, the input. So to reprogram your mind, because we, we've got to reprogram to be able to see. Because a lot of times we get duped into stepping out of our positions. We, we got to reprogram our minds so that when we see things, instead of trying to see them like we want to see them, we got to see them like God is showing them. Okay? And that's hard sometimes for us to see because a lot of times I'm looking at you and I'm looking at flesh and I'm thinking, man, that's flesh. That's flesh working. But no, I need to see what God is trying to show me even in that. I need to see as God see. In Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. That's a spiritual principle, will not change. If you think you're defeated, I, I really believe this. A loser is going to lose. You can't win thinking like a loser. A, uh uh. Now, nah, hang on. No, nah, I'm not going to, I'm just going to say this here. Let's keep it above water. I mean, so you, you're really decided on really it's like the sowing and reaping. You know, we kind of believe that sometimes. We just don't believe it all the time. We, we, we believe sowing and reaping to a certain extent. But do you really realize how you really would act if you really believe the spiritual principle of sowing and reaping? Because, you know, when we talk about sowing and reaping, we can only think of one thing. Most people got their mind on the dollar sign. Man, if I sold $10, I'm going to get $100 back. When I, it's funny how much return you want on your soul. Now, think about sowing and reaping. Now, you expect a big return on everything you sow, right? Why is it then you surprised when you sow something bad and it comes back? I, I believe a lot of things that happen in our lives <laughs> is operating on this principle. You sow a little bit of bad and get a, whole, get a little bit of bad? No. You, we want to sow a little bit of good and get a whole lot of good. But if you saw a little bit of bad, you don't want no bad to come back. But let me tell you something. Believe me, I don't understand a lot of things in the spirit world, but I do know one thing. There are certain laws that we'll never, ever negate. We can't stop it, and that's why do good. Why did the Bible tell you do good? Man, because if you do good, guess what? You don't get a whole lot of good. Some people haven't done enough good. They've done so much bad, and then when they do get a little bit of good, they're happy, but then when all the bad comes, then they're all upset. Why you think it's here? Why is that happening? I ain't saying everything happening in your life bad is because you're so bad, but there's some things just happen. But I do believe a lot of things that people are going through today is because of the spiritual principle God set forth in his word is that, you know, you're going, as you think, you become. You sow and you reap. And yet, you know, we, 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 we can't, we have a hard time uh, not knowing that the thoughts that God has for you. We don't understand what his imagination is for you. Like he said in his word, my thoughts towards you, they're not evil. God never thinks evil towards you. Does that mean evil can't come? No, it doesn't mean that. But it means that it's not his thoughts for you. So if I see evil coming, I know that's not his thoughts of me. I'm just going to go ahead and keep thanking God in spite of what showed up. Didn't change God's mind about me. He's not going to change God's mind about you. So his, God, his thought plans for me is good. Can I mess that up? Can I mess it up? Probably can. Yep. We must be careful. To understand that if that's his thought towards me, then but I gotta entertain that. It ain't gonna happen because I know that scripture, but it's gonna happen because I believe in my heart that no matter what, all things are still working together for good to them that love God. 
and a lot of times what we reap right now. A lot of things we reap right now is because of a lot of things that we sowed earlier. You're not going to, it's one thing I know about life. You, you, you may get by, but you cannot get away. You know, these thoughts become seeds. They're like plants. That's why I tell anyone, you know, I don't, I'm not here trying to legislate what you listen to, what you don't listen to. I don't want to try to legislate anything to you at all. But here's what I'm going to tell you this. If you get tired of being afraid, don't feed on fear. If, it, if it's causing you to be afraid, why are you eating it? All right? I, I am very selective in what I allow myself to think about. I'm very selective in what I allow myself to entertain. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you I don't have a television. I'm not going to tell you I ain't got none of that. I, but even that. It don't matter what I have. It's, it's what I control in here. There are certain things that I'm not going to allow because I don't like the results of it. I don't like fear. I don't like anxiety. I don't like depression. I don't like to see none of those things in my life. So I want to make sure that I'm not trying to feed that. Is there an antidote to this? The most important thing is that now, God will give us these statements, and a lot of times it's that, as a Christian, we are too embarrassed to say, I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to find it. How can I do that? Well, you know what I like about God? Stick with the Word. Now, what he's going to tell you to do may not seem so powerful, because it seems like God's stuff is just so easy, you know. Take my yoke up on me. My burden is light. He, he must not be walking with us, is he? Hmm? Is, is he really walking with us? Because he, he says some stuff that's just really blows my mind. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. Easy. Man, it wasn't easy these first 30 some years for me. I think I, I felt like I was carrying this all by myself. I bet you feel the same way, don't you? You feel like you, 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 you ain't got no help. God can't be helping me because this is too hard. Mm -hmm. But then we need to ask. We know what we shouldn't be thinking about, right? How I many of you know what you shouldn't be thinking about? We probably don't figure that out even though we may think about it anyway, but we figured out what we shouldn't be thinking about. And then, you know, it ain't, it ain't nothing like getting into a good movie and knowing it's a bad movie. You shouldn't be watching it, and all of a sudden you say, well, I ain't going to look at it no more, but then they can't, you can't get away from it, and then you finally say, well, you know, I'm just going to clean my mind up, but then it can't. How, how, you know, it, how many of you know it just don't go away like that? Hmm? They say, you know, guys, these crazy dreams. Wonder why you had a crazy dream. Because you put some crazy stuff in your mind. And you wonder why you all of a sudden dreaming crazy stuff. Well, that's the reason why you're dreaming crazy stuff. So the Lord wants to help us. And there is no uh, another way. He'll tell you, because we don't know how to renew our minds. He tells us how to, but then re renewing your mind transforming your mind through the word of God but then again we really don't have enough in us or put enough of that in us to really do damage to the old mind and we really haven't and when I say we it doesn't necessarily mean you but I'm speaking on a general whole we really haven't spent enough hours and time <clears throat> to really get our minds kind of renewed. We get saved, and shortly thereafter, that's it. We just got saved. But as far as our minds changing, because we used to go through a lot of things in the first few years of salvation, uh, we're going to have all kind of fights. We're going to have all kind of stuff going on, upset, mad, 
you know, because our minds haven't been renewed, you know. Uh, you know, some people are going to like uh, dinner rolls, some are going to like light bread. And, and, and you know, we're going to get mad at dinner because somebody bought the wrong kind of bread. I mean, because we're still not operating in a renewed mind. We're kind of like operating with an old mind. Got some new wine in there a little bit. Make you shout on Sundays a little bit, but we don't want that stuff to get it loose on any other day. We don't want to be on that every day. We just want to be able to do it when we want to do it. Control, you know, what do you call it, self-control? Yeah, we, we want a little control. But in, in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, if there ever was a scripture that needs to be marked in every Bible, that is one that needs to be marked in every Bible. Philippians 4 and 8. It, it, it should be marked in every Bible because we spend a lot of times, idle time, idle minds, without doing something to help give us the real mind that Christ has offered to us. And you, you're not going to get that thinking about the stock markets and everything else. Now, I'm not saying that you can't conduct your business. I'm not saying you can't give thoughts to some things, but I think most of the time we spend so much time thinking about stuff that don't really mean anything. Have no eternal value whatsoever. But finally, at last, brethren, what several things are true? If it ain't true, if you even doubt what is true, don't think on it. What several things are honest? If there's a doubt in your mind about that, don't think about it. But think on the things that are. Things that are true. Things that are honest. Things that are just. Things that are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Isn't it strange that we never look for the lovely? You know what gets our attention the most? Is the ugly. Huh? You know that we're not thinking about the lovely. You know, we don't even want to hear about uh, Sister Booker cooking apple pies or nothing for the homeless. <laughs> That's too lovely. <laughs> but if we want to Man, do you know what? You know what I heard? I heard she went around the corner, stole apple pie. Man, no, yeah. Now, you think we ain't going to think on that? Not only will we think on that, we're going to keep repeating it and talking about it until. And then we're going to wonder why when it comes time to having faith, we ain't got none. We wonder why when it comes time to really say the word of God, we don't have nothing to say. It's because our minds is not hooked up right. If you're going to be hooked up to Jesus, that's certain things you're going to be thinking about. You're not going to come out of a bad movie and all of a sudden be having a godly thoughts. You know, you, you're not going to watch the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and all of a sudden have a compassion for people to be saved. You probably, well, anyway, that's not me. Maybe you can, but I can't. What several things are of a good report? Do we look for good reports or bad ones? Which one would you rather hear? <laughs> if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, right? And then here we are in a battle of the mind. God tells you what you need to think of, tells you what you need to do, and you know what you're going to do? It's just the opposite of that because it's something about life. We're not, a good report is fine, but it just doesn't have the flavor of a bad report. It just seems like you can embrace the bad better than good. So, many times we'll say, well, bless God, I put some Christian music on, I was listening to Christian music all day, and uh, while, while I was thinking about choking my friend, <laughs> right, that's all well and good, but you, you only, you can't take this one of these out of settings. 
See, you, you, a lot of us say, well, you know, well, I, I was thinking on true, true things. But it's not just the true things. You got, you got to think on all these things. Not just the one that you want to pick out. You, 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 you know, you, you may be thinking about a praise, but it's not just praise. Think on some other stuff. All this other stuff in here is what gives you victory. All the other things is what clears your mind. Because unless you replace old thoughts with new thoughts, guess what? You're going to always be thinking the way you always did. You got to, like I said before, he wouldn't let the promised land be empty because it would be overran. But as they went through, they possessed theirs, even though the wild things had it. There are things in you right now is that, you know, when you first come to God, like I said, it would be really nice if God would have just took, once I got saved, spoke in tongue, he would just took my mind and just wiped it clean. I would have got up, had to learn my ABCs all over again and everything, you know. But he didn't. Because that's the battle. Is trying to get from one mind to the other mind, trying to leave my mind to get in his mind, trying to get from what I thought was my faith getting into his faith. See, many, many, many of us will become victorious the moment we started thinking different. See, I, I, I'm crazy. I think Paul said like this, I have become a fool for Christ's sake. I'm crazy like that, simple as that. Because I, I, I really believe if God can't, that no one can. I, I don't believe there's anybody anywhere, any, in, in any situation is greater than God is. I don't believe that. So many times we're praying and waiting for God to change what he thinks about us or change what he said about us. You know, he has said, but we'll pray against it. Uh, Lord, you know I need your help. Well, no, he knew that. That's why he saved you, because he knew you needed help. <laughs> Won't you be honest and tell him what the help you need? Because most of the time, you know, that's a generic thing. Lord, I need you. I need your help. I, we, he knows that already. Why don't you just go on and tell him the truth? Tell him where you need to help at. Tell him, uh, you know, I, I've been having a hard time thinking on some good things. Uh, I, I've been having a hard time just, uh, you know, uh, thinking about true things. I need the help there. You know, uh, our problems are just, when they finally manifest, they're not new. They've been there all the time. They, they, they've been there all the time. They don't, you don't go out and get a new problem. They're not new. They're ones we have never dealt with. But they're not new problems. They're just human problems. You know why? You're boring. And so they're not new. But God knows how to abort a lot of those problems in your life by you getting a new mind. See, we, you know, it, it, I, I, we can't help. I probably, I know I think different than Brother Thornton. I'm going to think different than Sister Booker. I'm going to think different than Brother Pope. You know why I'm going to think a little bit different? It's because of where I've been and they've been. That, that things has been put in me from you, from baby up. Things put in you from baby up. And those things that, you know, some of them I need to replace. Growing up, they may have been good, but I'm in the kingdom of God. And a lot of those thoughts, I need to replace them thoughts that I got growing up with, even though they, they feel so real to me. I got to replace them with a new mind that I'm getting from God. Because his system is so much different than the one I grew up in. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. See, we let frustration, anger, fear rule our hearts. They really do. 
they rise to be the prime minister of your life. Your frustrations, your anger, your fears. But the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 7, but let the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts. We need to allow peace to keep our hearts. If that's one thing I've learned in the last few years, if there ain't no peace for me, I move on. I operate. I don't want to operate in nothing but the peace of God. Because that's where all the power of God is in your life is the peace he gives you. And when you abort his peace, you really have aborted your victory, you aborted your faith, you aborted a lot of things in your life. So let me, let my heart be kept in peace. Pursue it with all diligence. Do whatever. That's when I said to people, I will, if, if I've done you wrong, I'll crawl to you and apologize. I just got to have peace in my heart. Simple as that. I want to have peace in my heart. Our minds are like those computers. You know, we only can give out what we've been fed. Right? So now you got to ask yourself now, are you eating the breakfast of champions? <laughs> huh? Are you eating the breakfast of champions? Because, you know, you, what's going to come out of you is what's been going in you. All right? If you ain't been eating the breakfast of champion, chances are you're probably not coming out a champion. But what, what comes in, that's why the Bible say, is you don't get defiled by what goes in. But how you get defiled is what comes out. And so if you don't want defilement to come out, Guess what you need to put in? You're going to need to put some stuff in there that won't defile you. Because if you are feeding on corruption, you are not going to get a pure results. Mm, 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 mm. And so we are affected. See, I believe this. A man's idea of the computer really is like even us in one sense. There's so many things that can uh, be compared to. You, you can have a good computer, be running just nice, and all of a sudden you invite an ad in and open it up, and all of a sudden it put a virus on you. And then that virus messes up your whole system. Have you ever been going along real good in God? And just open yourself up to a little simple conversation and all of a sudden you got a virus in your system now. Huh? All of a sudden that, that little information that you bought into inside your system, you can't shake it. You ever have stuff you get in you, you can't just shake it? A little small thing, a little virus. Man, I was... Up in Chicago, I want to say that I am now. And I don't even know how to put this. But anyway, I, I was uh, in, in a minister's meeting up there. And you had a lot of guys that were ascribing to be bishops and all this kind of stuff. And you know, if you weren't a bishop, you didn't have a conversation. And, and I was getting a little irate in my Holy Ghost. Well, it wasn't my Holy Ghost, but I thought it was. And, and, and it bothered me. It bothered me after the meeting because I kept getting this gouge in me. You know, they, they ignored you. They, you ever felt like that? And you get in your spirit and you can't get it out. You come back the next day, you sleep on it, you wake up, and the next day you're still feeling that same gouge in you. You're trying to get rid of it. One of my dear friends right now, he was in a meeting the same way. 
and one of the men owed a meeting, and my friend is like 80 some years old. This young dude, he's like 40 something, and told him to, he was running the meeting, told my older friend to shut up, sit down. Well, that didn't go over well, because my friend called me in tears. He said, I need to go tell him that what he done. And he said, but I'm going to forgive him. But do you know, for about six months, every time I talked to him, it come up again. You know why it came up again? It's still on the hard drive. Do you, do you know how, why we keep telling people how we got hurt? Do you ever feel that emotion when you tell them how that bad thing happened to you? You get emotional about it. You, every time you talk about it, the pain, maybe after a while the pain ain't as bad, but you, every time you talk about it, you want to get angry. That's so many things in my past I, I quit talking about because every time I talked about it, I would get angry. I'd get upset. I got cousins today. If I talked about them, I'd be upset with them. So I quit talking about them. You know why? Because if I do start talking about them, I'm going to get that imprint back on my hard drive. And then I get these bad thoughts about them. I don't want to, I want to see them through the mind of Christ and not through the mind of Kelly. Because the more I bring up the stuff about Kelly, I get myself worked up, frustrated, full of anger. So we got to get, we need some antivirus software. <laughs> to put into our system to get rid of all of these viruses. They usually don't show up. You don't even know they're on your computer until it's too late. And then they done crashed your whole computer. But God has given us an antivirus software. And it's called the Word of God. And it will destroy all the viruses that you don't know you even got here to protect you from the viruses that might come. Already protected because that's like Jesus said. He had an antivirus in him like that. The Bible said that when the devil came, he said, the evil one come. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> he ain't got nothing in here. Isn't it strange how we still got viruses that can attack us still work in our system? We struggle with these things in our system all the time when God has given us a word. And we'll just take and think on this, replace. Everybody said replace. Because it's about replacing. So you're not, you're not going to get all your thoughts from your past out of your system without replacing them with something else. You're not made to live in a vacuum. So you're not going to be able to just say, well, I'm just going to not think like I used to think and, and, and just get rid of all that. And then you're one of the most miserable person in the world because you've got to replace that with something. Man was not made to act like that. You've got to have something coming out of you. You've got to have something going in you. You can't just say, well, I'm just going to forget about it. You know, try not to think about it. Try not to think about it because that's what it's going to be. Try not to because you will. So we need to get our minds thinking. Scripturally. See, I, I don't believe you've got to get up and, and read the whole Bible every morning. But you know what's really good? It's just get a thought. Get a good thought from God and work on that all day. You, it, you'll be amazed what he can do with one word. Just get a thought. Get your scripture. Get something in your mind, going in your mind, and just meditate. Think on that all day long. Work all through your work, get a mind. You're getting your mind changed. We got so much stuff coming to our minds today that we don't have a chance to even try to distinguish what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's not good. A lot of information is coming to us right now. So we got to get a scriptural mind. See, 
we got these selective, we got selective thoughts, right? We, we got these selective thoughts. We already kind of gauge them. We know what we think is good and what's bad. We, we got that all, we kind of like figured out, I think. But we need to have selective thoughts according to the word of God. We need to renew our minds, transform. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 2 that you may prove what is that good and accept what the perfect will of God. We have to pay attention to every word, every phrase. Catch your own self. I know when I start talking down. I know when I start talking fear. You know, I, I started, and I know, I don't say this to make anybody feel bad, but I remember just the other week when, they, when them people robbed me like that. Now, I'm going to tell you what, my mind, the next day, you know where it was? It had a lot of thoughts. It had a lot of thoughts. I was thinking of a lot of things. But then I had slapped myself. Come on back, Kelly. And then I had some people around me. I, I, I quit telling people because of that. Because you know what they told me? You know what I'd do if I was you? So you? You need to get you a piece. So yeah, you need to get you a piece. I said, oh, yeah, you're right. So yeah, you have a little nice 25 automatic. See, you could arrest us and just start a fine. Da, da, da. Yeah. But that was sounding good. Woo, that was sounding good. Man, that sounded so good. I want to hang a sign out in front of my door after I got it and say, rob me again. <laughs> do, do, do you know how upsetting it can be? No, you probably don't. But for them to do that, it takes God to change my mind. And even right now, you know, I, after all this has happened, I don't feel mad. I don't feel mad. And that's, 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 that's not Kelly. <laughs> I'm not upset. But I had to fight through a lot of stuff to get there. I had to go through I had to work through a lot of subtle fear. Chicken windows. Chicken doors. That first week I'm getting up, I hear a noise. I'm thinking, better not be coming back in here. Then, you know, finally God gets my attention. Was I with you? Yes, you were. You could have been shot and killed. True. Was I with you? You got to say no more. I'm not going to kill myself in anxiety and fears. Because if God be for you, he's going to be more than all the world against you. I know you probably say, well, but they took your stuff. They don't know. That's things. <laughs> I'm still standing here tonight talking to you now. Do you know that some people didn't even went through the same stuff I went through, didn't make it out of that? Huh? God knows what he's doing. So what I'm saying tonight we got to, if you don't like what's happening in your life right now, 
if you think in your life things could be better, why don't you try, first of all, getting the process right? Because nothing's going to change until mind change. They, if your mind can't change, I don't care what you do after that, you're going to always be the same, and you'll always do the same. You may have some laws in there, but you're going to always come back to your default settings. And what that default setting is, is when God don't do it soon enough, quick enough for me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take care of business. Any questions or comments tonight? We're going to talk a little bit more about this, though. I got to, I'm not just teaching just to be teaching. No. No, I really believe that there, there is a reality in serving God. It, it, it goes way beyond anything I'd ever dream. Matter of fact, it's bigger than even my biggest imagination about God. But I do know that I hate to see God look so small in the eyes of a world in which he should be so big. And he should be, in the, he should be big in our lives. We can't convince the world of God's salvation when we're still thinking like they think. Okay, we can't get their thoughts and change God's mind with their thoughts. We're not going to change our world because we all got together with human thinking and somehow came up with great ideas. You, we're not the first one who did that. Man had a great idea to build a tower to heaven one time. It was a great idea. But it wasn't God's idea. So here what I'm saying to us today is that you know, as Christians, let's get our minds renewed. Make sure that our minds are being renewed. And they're not going to be renewed if you're not re renewing them daily. Our minds should get renewed daily. Every day you get up, you should be trying to put new in your mind, new stuff from the kingdom. Because if you put some new exciting things in your life, you'll, you'll find out that the things you thought excited you before don't excite you anymore. But that comes from a changed mind. God bless you. Any questions, statements? Preach or whatever? No? All right. Thank you so much. God bless you.